Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the front brake pads and rotors on your Subaru. Alright guys, and the tools you'll need for today is a 17mm combination wrench, a 3 8 ratchet, an extended 3 8 ratchet, a 14mm socket, a 17mm socket, a flathead screwdriver, a C-clamp, of course you'll want a crossbar or breaker bar and 19mm socket. I also used some disc brake caliper grease. Of course you also want your jack and jack stands as well. With all that said, let's go ahead and begin today's project. Okay guys, and the first thing you'll want to do is go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver, we're going to pop this center cap off, and then you'll want to go ahead and take a breaker bar or crossbar like this with a 19mm socket if you got that breaker bar, and go ahead and break your lug nuts loose before you go ahead and lift the car up in the air, so once we got up in the air we can finish removing those lug nuts. Okay guys, here we are down at below underneath the car and the next thing you want to do is we're going to go ahead and lift up the car and we see this hook right here I got this jacks in it's going to kind of hold it there and the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm doing both brakes but you'd want to go ahead and place your jack underneath this hook right here and use that to lift up the car and then when you see my jack sitting back over there that's where you'll go ahead and that's a good place to put the jack stand you can place it right there and that'll ensure that you perform a safe job when we're replacing these brakes all right, and now that you've got your car lifted up, we'll go ahead and finish removing these lug nuts and then we'll just take this wheel right off. Wow. All right, guys, and the next thing you want to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these two caliper slide bolts, and it's going to be a 14 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and break them loose. And then, let's see. And that also before we take this bolt all the way off you'll take a, a flathead screwdriver maybe not this long but that's just the one I got right here I'm gonna go ahead and grab and pry I'm gonna reach in here and just kind of compress that piston a little bit so I'll be able to remove the caliper there we go I've got it compressed enough now I'm gonna finish removing those bolts there there I got the one and the other and now we'll just be able to slip this caliper here right off and then we got these brake pads and I'll go ahead and take the pads off and I'm just gonna slip them right off here I'm gonna go ahead and just take this flathead just kind of help me pry it off there a little bit and then the other one and we can see we've got like an uneven pad wear I'm gonna tell you how to address that here as well and that one's wedged in there pretty well I'm just gonna there we go take it off and here in just a second, I'll show you how to put everything back together. But not before I go ahead and talk about this rotor in case you need to replace your rotor or have it resurfaced. Alright, we have now reached the most important segment of this video. Please do not skip over this part of the video. It's important for you to hear what I've got to say about rotors. And it's important to assure that after you've done your brake repair, your car will be safe to drive. So, we've got a few different options here when it comes to dealing with your rotors. You can either replace your rotor, have your rotor resurfaced, or you can keep and use your current rotor as is. Now first I'm going to go over replacing the rotor. It is an absolute must to replace the rotor if its measurement is below the minimum thickness threshold to ensure your car is safe to drive. What I'm going to describe here in just a second whether you want or don't want to replace the rotor that's up to you affordability and comfort is at hand but if it is below the minimum thickness threshold there's no other way about it you must replace the rotor okay so now that we understand that and here in just a second I'll show you how to measure it and be able to tell whether it's below the threshold or not but now we're gonna talk about turning your rotors now there's a few there's a couple reasons you could turn your rotor and that's to keep your present rotor and you can pay about ten dollars to Napa or O'Reilly 
where they have a brake lathe and they will turn your rotor for you. It's, it's a cheaper option than buying a whole new rotor. And the reason you'd want to do that is if you've wore your brake pads down metal to metal and the metal pad is wedged in grooves there and it's all torn up, then you don't want to put new pads on that torn up surface with your old rotor. So you'd want to have your rotor resurfaced. And that's to ensure longevity for your new brake pads. The other reason to have your rotors resurfaced at a parts store is if you're having vibration problems with your rotors. That is, if you're driving down the highway and you apply the brake pedal and you feel your brake pedal vibrating. If you don't like that, that would be a good reason to have your rotors turn. But if you're really particular, just keep in mind that when the rotors are thinner, they're more likely to develop that warpage problem. Because what happens is you'll be driving down the road, you'll run through a big puddle of water and the water will splash on the hot rotor and it'll warp the rotor. The thicker the rotor is, or the newer the rotor is, it's gonna be less likely to develop this problem. So resurfacing the rotor, if you have that problem, will fix the problem, but it'll come back faster. So if you have the extra money, and you really don't want that problem, you can go ahead and just throw money at it and just get a new rotor every time. But if you want to see the problem go away and risk it coming back or not, it may or may not come back, you can go ahead and turn it and get out of the situation cheaper and be more comfortable. Now the last option is to just keep your rotor and put new brake pads on. That is a very acceptable option. And that's what I do about 80% of the time. Again, as long as the rotor is above the minimum threshold. Because if it's not, it's not gonna be safe to drive. So, it's okay to put new pads on your old rotor if it's smooth like this you can see right here. As long as it's a semi-smooth surface, you can go ahead and put the new brake pads on. It's really fine. So those are the three options that you have. Replacing, resurfacing, or just keeping your old one. And again, most of the time, most people are just fine keeping their old rotor and putting new pads on top of their old rotor. One more thing I almost forgot to use. Rotors that cause vibration, they're safe to drive. It's just an uncomfortable thing. The unsafe thing is the below the minimum thickness, but rotors that cause vibration are safe to drive. And also, this minimum thickness number, if I don't tell you exactly what the number is here in just a second, you can find it at your parts store. They'll, they'll give you a discard thickness number on your rotor, so keep that in mind too. Okay guys, and for these particular rotors, and again, this is a Subaru Outback Legacy, it's gonna be 22 millimeters is going to be your discard thickness. So you're just gonna take your tool right here, I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna get my corner there. And I'm reading 2205, so it looks to be really close to a discard rotor. We'll check it out here and see. And next I'll show you how to, we're gonna remove this bracket right here and I'll show you how to remove and replace your rotor here as well if you have to do that. Alright guys, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and take these caliper bracket bolts out. And I remeasured this rotor, I actually measured about 23.5. I had zeroed my tool apparently when I was measuring it there, so I read a little incorrect. And for this top bolt right up here, you're going to want to take a 17 millimeter combination wrench. I'm just going to reach my line there. So I'm going to push down on them. And lift them over here. So I've broken both those loose. Next, I'll just kind of zip them both off here and remove this bracket. Okay guys, and here's a little better shot of the, the bolt. There's one there and then you'll see the other one down there below on the bottom. I'll just go ahead and zip them off here. And then I got the bottom one. And there we go. Just wanted to fall off there, I caught it. And now, I'll be able to just go ahead and slide this piece right off here once I move this caliper. And I wanna make sure you can see all that I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna kinda set this guy out of the way. And then our rotor will just pull right off, just like that. All right, and we actually did decide to go with the new rotor here. And the next thing you'll wanna do is go ahead and take your old pad, and we're gonna compress these two pistons back. And we're gonna try and do it here as close to the middle as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen our C-clamp here up and I'm gonna try and grab right on the edge there. I'm also gonna try and get my C-clamp to drop just like that. And then we're just gonna kinda slowly, not too quickly, cause we don't wanna damage the piston seals. So I'm just gonna slowly bring them on back there. 
and what we're doing here is we're enabling the caliper to go back on when we have those new pads back on so this is going to allow us to put new pads on again if you if you're just checking them you wouldn't need to actually do this step right here you could bypass what we're doing but I'm guessing you're watching this video because you need the new pads so go ahead and do this right here it's good for you now we're going to now put on our caliper bracket install the new pads and I'll tell you a little, a little bit more about what you need to know in the following steps okay guys and the next thing you want to do is we're gonna go ahead and stick this guy back in here and we're gonna grab our 17 millimeter bolt here I'm just gonna you want to do the same kind of stick your head in there and see exactly where you're putting this guy and you may have to push up against that rotor so your bracket will fit back in here like it's supposed to and then we'll just go ahead and make sure we get that bolt threaded into the caliper bracket and now I'll go ahead and show you here I'm gonna zip them down and I'll show you about how tight you want them in there okay guys and just cuz you couldn't see exactly what I was doing there and I'm sure you couldn't while I was taking out either these are the two bolts I'm talking about we got the 17 millimeter there and there and those are the ones you'll take out and remove to remove this whole piece right here so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you about how tight you want them in there all right so I went ahead and snugged them down now I'm gonna take a big ratchet right like this and about how tight you see me pull about the amount of force you see me exert if you could translate that into what you want to do here that's how much you're gonna do now watch as I pull remember I just snugged it down and now I did one pull right there and then again right like that so just make sure you exert a good amount of force you want these guys to be on there real tight and then this one we're gonna have to use that combination wrench but about the same about the same amount on there and next I'll show you what you want to do when we're putting our pads back on there and also I'm gonna tell you a little bit about these caliper slide pins all right guys and the next thing you want to do we're gonna put our new pads in I got that one in there and I will take my brush my brush is out of order right now but I'm just gonna take some of this high temperature brake grease and just apply it right there on the ends of the pad and then we're just gonna set them right here in our little brake home the little brake clip there so we'll set it now our new caliper or our caliper that we have we'll set back in but before I show you that we have these caliper slide pins and they're these guys right here you want to make sure that they're sliding smoothly back and forth like you're seeing right there this one has a seal on it so it's gonna move a little bit differently but just make sure you take those out and grease them up if they're not moving like you're seeing me moving right here if they're not doing that then you do need to make sure they're greased up because what's gonna happen is your caliper floats on these slide pins and I'll show you here, you're also, when you're installing the, the caliper, you're going to want to push your slide pins in so we can get this guy to line up here. But your caliper floats on those slide pins. It, it's a very small movement that it makes. And that's what's going to allow your brake pads to wear evenly. So that's why it's really important to do that if you took your brakes off and you had a funky wear pattern. That's probably going to be the cause of it, was those caliper slide pins weren't put on properly. Anyways, now we're going to go ahead and take our caliper bolts and we're going to put those back in and here in just a second I'll show you just about how tight you want those in. Okay, and I went and grabbed my two 14 millimeter caliper bolts here. I'm just going to go ahead and run them down. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my more regular type ratchet, not that super long one. And then about right like what you're going to see me do, I got it snug down and then just right about there. Not any more than that is needed because you can really strip out those slide pin uh, threads really pretty easy. So again, I'm just going to come over here and just about that right like you saw me do there. Much more than that, again, can strip those threads. So just be careful with those. Make sure just you know run it down and then snug it that's all you really need to put on there next I'll put the wheel back on I'll give you a little bit more information and then that'll just about finish the project okay and the next thing we'll do is I'm putting the wheel back on and one thing I've started doing here is I like to use the anises because when you're do-it-yourselfer a lot of times you'll use the breaker bar in the socket 
or a crossbar and that can put a lot of extra stress on these threads so by using the anises you're really going to help preserve the life of your lug nuts and the threads here on the stud so I'm just going to finish putting it on here and also one more thing before you finish the job you want to make sure you depress the brake pedal all the way if you don't you're going to hit the first thing that's in front of you or behind you when you start up the car and you put it in reverse or drive because you're not going to be able to stop if you haven't pumped your brake pedal to where it's nice and stiff that's going to make your brakes actually work also one more thing i'm just going to show you here tighten it up and then i have one more piece of information also you're going to want to do that in a star like you saw me do it there just to make sure the wheel goes down how it's supposed to and also just don't forget to put that cap back on make sure you remove your jack stand and then you can go ahead and let the car back down. And that's it. You're done with your project. So that sums up today's video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time and I will see you then.